Hello students, today we are doing part 2 of lesson 7 from your science textbook for standard 6, Nutrition and Diet. So let's continue with the lesson. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Now let's learn about minerals and vitamins. Okay, so the constituents of food that we, the different kinds of food that we eat, we also get a lot of minerals and vitamins which are required for the body. So let's learn that in detail. Now to improve the body's resistance to disease, resistance means to fight any kind of disease. You know, no, whenever you get, fall sick, so most of the children can get better in a few days but there are st uh, some children who take a very long time to get better so if you have good food your body can fight diseases okay so therefore we should have all kinds of food food rich in all constituents okay so therefore even vitamins and minerals are required and why they are required in order for our body to resist disease, to fight disease and for other life processes, the body needs vitamins, minerals and fiber in the diet. Fiber. Fiber means it is the thread like substances that are there in our food. Okay. So sometimes when you eat, especially when you are eating mango, you must have realized no, that, that you know you get that thread like thing uh, when you are eating. So all the food has fiber in various proportions in the diet and that is very very important for the digestion and for the body to throw out the waste products out of our body and we obtain these nutrients mainly from vegetables and fruits so we get vitamins and minerals from vegetables and fruits therefore we should consume a lot of vegetables and fruits throughout the day we require vitamins and minerals in small quantities but that deficiency can lead to various diseases okay now vitamins and minerals we don't require much okay we require little quantity but if we don't consume it at all if you don't eat vegetables you don't eat uh, fruits and all that your body will not get vitamins and minerals and so this deficiency means deficiency means when your body does not have vitamins and minerals it is less then it can lead to various diseases and your body will not be able to recover from the diseases, will not be able to fight any kind of diseases. Let us learn more about them. Okay, so the body needs several inorganic substances. So, our body requires so many of the uh, inorganic, that is, they are called minerals. Okay, we require minerals in our body. So, our body requires minerals and the table below gives examples of some minerals and provides information about their functions. Okay, so it gives us the various minerals our body requires as well as why it requires, what is the Use of it what is the function of it in the body the various sources of minerals as well as the diseases caused by their deficiency is given in this table so the various minerals what is the function what is the source source means from where we can get these minerals and if we do not have this okay if we don't have this uh, minerals what will happen to our body so let's re read this in detail and understand it because it's a very important table for us so the first mineral we are going to learn about is iron okay so why it is required carrying oxygen to all the parts of the body so what does iron do it carries oxygen oxygen is required you know for us so when the blood has oxygen it gets oxygen from the lungs it has to supply it to various parts of the body so that is the work done by the iron mineral iron okay and from where will we get it we'll get it from meat and those who don't eat meat can have spinach what is spinach our palak okay that we call in hindi palak then apples and raisins what are raisins dry grapes are called raisins so we should have all this in our diet if we don't have it what will happen we will have anemia Okay, so our body will not have iron in it. The blood will not have iron in it. So when the blood does not have iron in it, so we say that that person is suffering from anemia. Now let us look at the second mineral that is calcium and phosphorus. So what is the function of it? 
it strengthens the bones and teeth so it gives strength to the bones and teeth okay you must have seen a lot of advertisements of toothpaste and all that and milk um, products that they sell on tv they'll say calcium you know your bones will become stronger your teeth will become stronger so all those ads you must have seen on tv so the calcium and phosphorus help to our bones and teeth to being stronger and so how will we get it we'll get it from milk and milk products like i told you early what are milk products milk products are your butter ghee then we have uh, paneer we have other uh, curds okay so all these are our milk products as well as green leafy vegetables and meat so even if you do not consume meat you can consume milk and green leafy vegetables so if you do not have calcium or phosphorus in your body what will happen you will have bad teeth you will have brittle and weak bone bones okay brittle means something that will easily break okay sometimes when you fall you have a fracture and bones break so in some children those who do not have calcium and phosphorus in their body or deficient of it they do not have it in the proper proportions then they will have bad teeth they will have brittle and weak bones okay now let's look at the next a uh, mineral that is iodine so from where do we get what does it do it controls the growth that is it helps the body to grow speeds of chemical reaction in the body so when we are consuming food there is lot of digestion goes on so digestion means there is lot of chemical reaction going on in our body so that is what iodine helps to control and to speed up okay so it helps to increase the speed of it and from where do we get it we'll get it from raisins like i told you raisins are dry grapes okay so dry grapes that we get in okay throughout the year we can have grapes we get it only during winter season but dry grapes the grapes they dry it so we can consume it throughout the year so raisins beans fish and other seafood okay so from all these things we will get our iodine if you do not have iodine what will happen you will get a disease called goiter hmm. now let's look at the next uh, mineral that is sodium and potassium okay sodium potassium so what does it do maintains the body's water balance because our body requires wo uh, water isn't it so and it requires water for digestion for the circulation of blood so it maintains the body's water and functioning of the muscles and the nervous system so what is the nervous system nervous system is the nerves carrying the various uh, messages from the brain to the various part of the body so that uh, nervous it helps the nervous system to function properly so it is again potassium and sodium are two minerals which are important so from where will we get it we'll get it from salt we'll get it from cheese leafy vegetables fruits and pulses so pulses are all your dals okay so we should have consume fruits and vegetables and uh, pulses also so if you don't have sodium and potassium what will happen you will have weak muscles inefficient muscles so your muscles will not be strong so you will have weak uh, muscles now there are now let's learn about vitamins so there are two types of vitamins one is water soluble vitamins what do you mean by soluble that is it can mix in the water okay so they can mix in the water so they are called water soluble vitamins and there are water insoluble vitamins which do not mix in the water so let's read about it one is vitamin b and vitamin c dissolve easily in water okay so they are called water soluble vitamins b and c are called water soluble and they are thrown out of the body through the water in sweat and urine so the water that we consume it is thrown out after the body does all the function so sweat so sweating we sweat isn't it so that is also a way of throwing the um, water out of the body as well as when we urinate hence a regular supply of these vitamins is essential so we should have these vitamins regularly now there are the different types of vitamin b also we have b1 b2 b3 b6 b9 b12 are the important types of vitamin b 
Okay. Now, uh, let's look at the insoluble vitamins. These vitamins are insoluble in water but are soluble in fatty substances. What are fatty substances? All our ghee, oil, all the fats that we eat. Okay. So, that is our fatty substances and they can digest in that. So, therefore, even fatty substances require, uh, we should have. They get stored in the body and uh, which are the vitamins that do not dissolve? They are vitamins. A, D, E and K are fat soluble vitamins. Okay, so these are water soluble and these are fat soluble vitamins. Okay. Do solve the exercise that is given to you at the end of the lesson. And to check your answers, you can visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com. You'll get the link in the description box below. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.